All right, can everybody see that? If you click here. Yes, I can. I can see. Uh, good, good. You're from. Yep. Okay. Can you guys see that? This should be good. Yep. All right. So, uh, okay, good. We are nice, nice and empty. All right. So I am going to type this command. Um, before we get started, because it will take some time, and then we'll start the intro. Um, Matt, if you could do me a favor and post a getting started link from the docs in Juju into sure. the IRC channel, that will work. Okay. So this entire track is going to be mostly dim. Okay, so first of all, hi, everyone. I'm George Castro. Sorry about the technical difficulties here. Uh, we got that ironed out, and we'll go back and edit the video so you don't have to see all that mess. So thanks for sticking around if you're there. If you're in IRC and listening to the session live, just say hello or something. Um, I'm joined by uh, Matt Bruzek here. Um, who will be kind of tossing URLs and whatnot into uh, into IRC. The Google logo there, uh, from now on, I'll, it, it'll show the bottom of the terminal. So we're just going to let that scroll off there. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and go over all the commands uh, one by one anyway. Um, so, yeah, most of this track is going to be demo-based, which means that we really want you to, like, either play along or... Um, kind of ask questions interactively. You're not going to see a lot of slides today in this cloud track. Uh, we like to do things live, demo. We like to see things break. We like to SSH into things to see why they're broken, um, that sort of thing. So if you are into that, that's cool. You've shown up to the right session. Um, so I am going to start today by basically how to get started with Juju um, and how to kind of get off the ground using it. And then the rest of the sessions today, will be more advanced topics like deploying your own big data stack um, or Kubernetes or things like that. So the first thing that needs to happen when you use Juju is decide what are you going to use Juju for. So what Juju is is an orchestration system to allow you to deploy and manage services in the cloud. All right, so what does that mean? That means that you have stuff that you want to run on services and you want to manage that stuff, but you want to do it at scale, right, which means that you want things that are repeatable, observable, um, and testable so you can do them over and over again. So while it's really nice to set up uh, things by hand, after you do that the first time, every time after that it gets old. So what Juju provides is a, is a framework of tools that people can use to build these things that we call charms around services. So a charm could be something like WordPress or MySQL or PostgreSQL, right, or a collection of services like OpenStack, which is things like Keystone, Nova, Swift, all the components that make up complex distributed systems can be distilled into things that we call charms. Charms are just source code. They can do whatever you want. They effectively run as root on the instance uh, that the cloud gives you, right? So as such, they can be written in anything you want. They can be written in Chef or Puppet. Uh, you can use Ansible to do things to the machine that you want. You can write them in raw Bash or Python, whatever it is you're comfortable with. Um, and we built a set of tools and existing charms uh, based on best practices of what people do. So if you want to do like a WordPress or a MySQL, you don't have to start from scratch. So what I've done here is basically I've said Juju Bootstrap, and I'm doing this on AWS. Um, so I'm going to tell you what's going on here, then I'm going to kind of show you how to get started here. So what it's doing here is we're asking Amazon, hey, I need a, what we call a state server. Um, and this state server, Amazon will say, okay, Juju's asking for a machine. It gives us a machine. Uh, it installs Ubuntu on it, 64-bit. We don't have to care manually about what AMI we're going to get. We're just going to get the latest official uh, supported image. Um, then it's going to install. It's going to do an update and upgrade. It's going to install a few tools on there. And then this machine is basically like our control node. So if you think of it in the whole system, there's one machine that basically controls everything so that when you ask for more machines or you need to set up a cluster, things like that, this node is what gets that stuff done. So currently by default we have one if you're in a production environment. 
Um, you can fire up to, I think, seven, five or seven? I don't know, as long as it's an odd number, uh, to do high availability, right, in case that you have uh, um, needs to do, like, a HA type of cluster. Also, feel free to just pop questions in IRC. Um, I should be able to see them. I don't think there's enough people where you need to put question in front or, or things like that. So what do you need to get started with Juju? The first thing you need is a cloud, which is... Um, not as easy as you might think. Some people uh, don't have piles of computers sitting in their room. Well, I know people that do, but they're not normal. Um, but generally speaking, um, you, you need a cloud. Doing it on one machine, you could do that, but eh, it's kind of, uh, you, you don't really get the benefit of doing clusters and things like that unless you have multiple machines. Luckily, there are tons of clouds that Juju already works with. Everything from, um, uh, my, or Amazon Web Services, uh, Microsoft Azure, which runs uh, Juju very well. Um, if you have your own OpenStack or bare metal, like at your company or, or at work or something like that, you could use that. Uh, we have support for Joint and a few other clouds as well. We also have a manual provider that lets you do things like uh, use cheaper VPS solutions um, where you would you know, SSH to the machine, add your keys, and then Juju can use that and things like that. So you can find all setups for these in the, um, in the Juju docs with Matt. We'll drop a link there uh, in IRC, and you'll see on the left, whatever cloud that you have, you can click on that. Um, I'm going to tend to default to, um, to using AWS for this demonstration here. So when you, the first thing you need to do, uh, let me back up, is actually, if you look at the getting started, is installed Juju. So Juju is available in the archive. Like if you see, if you do a nav cache search Juju, you will find it there um, along with other tools. Um, but what we recommend is using Juju from the PPA, which gives you the latest stable release. Um, so you can add that by doing add at repository PPA Juju slash stable. And, Mark, and uh, Matt will drop a link to the Juju Stable PPA there uh, in IRC. And this will just ensure that your client machine al always has a stable version of Juju available to it. Um, and that is fine. So that's what I'm using. Um, I'm actually doing crazy stuff today. I'm doing this in Xenial, which I just upgraded to. So this is the latest, the greatest, latest version of Juju, which is 125. Um, so if you install Juju, the name of the package is Juju Core. Uh, and then you have that. There's also a convenience package called Quick Start, which we won't be using today, um, which kind of gives you an end curses way to, whoa, there it is, um, which kind of gives you an end curses way to set up your clouds and things like that. But we're not going to be using that today. Um, we'll just be using a uh, normal command line. So. So if you've installed Juju, you try to bootstrap and you can't bootstrap. It'll say, you don't have a cloud here, so I'm going to do the local provider, which lets you run uh, Juju in LXC containers on your laptop. Um, but today we're going to use it on a, on, a, on a real cloud. So what you can do, however, is type uh, Juju init, which I'm not going to hit enter here because I have a config file. And this will generate a config file for you in... the Juju directory, if I could type it right. There we go. Um, and it looks like this, in environments.yaml. And it will create a little skeleton for you. Now, I am not going to... Ugh, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, there we'll have your, your keys and everything like that for your, um, for your AWS credentials and things like that. And I will need to go ahead and blow those away after this session. Um, I was kind of hoping that there was a bunch of boilerplate, but I tend to cut out the boilerplate in my config files. So that was a mistake. Um, so you do, uh, you put in your key, that's your secret key, and your, your access key and your secret key for Amazon. They're different for every cloud. The documentation that Matt has, um, that Matt has uh, posted in the IRC channel will kind of show you the different um, keys that each cloud expects, uh, and you just fill those out, and then you should have a working cloud. Um, so a lot of these accounts do uh, require you to connect a credit card to them. There, there are some free tiers available, um, 
And of course, and I'll get to this at the end here, if you are writing charms uh, and making them open source and pushing them to the charm store, Canonical will be more than happy to pay um, your AWS bill for that development. So uh, we have an entire developer program um, that you can apply for. In fact, uh, Bruiser, if you want, you can send people to uh, developer, what is it, developers.juju.solutions? One of those, and you can actually apply apply for those credentials right now, and then you'll get credentials within 24 hours for you to play around and mess with Juju. Uh, and then we'll give you, I think, up to 10 instances, and then you can go write charms and things like that. All right, so what, one command I love to use a lot is status. This always tells you what Juju is happening, um, what, what Juju is doing, what it's not doing, things like that. So you hear it tells us we have one machine, so we're on Amazon. We have one machine. That machine is number zero. The agent state, um, which is started, the, the version of Juju, which is 1.25. So what happens is there's a machine living right now. It's machine zero in Amazon, um, and it has an a, a Juju agent running on it. So on each of the machines, Juju installs an agent um, that does all the Juju stuff for us. So this is just saying that the agent is already there, it's installed, and it's started. That means it's ready to go. Um, instance ID, which is like a, a generated um, string unique to each machine. Um, the instance we can see is running. It's running trusty, and it gives us a, a glimpse of the hardware, um, which is, it tells us the architecture, how many CPU cores, the CPU power, which depends on what cloud you're on, um, memory, uh, how much space we have on the root disk, and as you can see here, we're in US, US East 1A uh, on Amazon. So depending on what cloud you're on, like if you're on Google Compute Engine, right? they don't have a US East 1A, they call it something else or whatever. What's really nice, something that, that Juju does really nice is it automatically will put stuff in different um, AZs as you... Uh, as you deploy things so that you get a little bit of resiliency here, which is a really nice feature. Um, and state server member status has vote. Remember when I was saying that the state server, you can run multiple of them um, uh, for HA configurations. That sees which ones uh, currently have a voting status for those of you that are interested in figuring out how Quorum works and things like that. Okay, so we really only have one... Uh, one machine running, this is basically the, the, the kind of empty Juju environment here that I've called Amazon. You can call these environments everything you want, right? You know, uh, I just tend to call them Amazon or whatever, but you could have, you know, testing 1B, production, things like that. You can have multiple, you can have as many environments as you want that you define in environments.yaml across multiple clouds. So that's really nice. So now you've got to figure out what is it that you want to run on this cloud, right? And for that... Um, you just go to jujucharms.com, which is, uh, Matt will post a link in IRC, and look for what you're wanting to deploy to run in your cloud, right? Nobody makes empty clouds and doesn't do anything with them. So in this case, uh, since we're just getting started, we're going to deploy a really simple blog uh, with WordPress and MySQL. Uh, very simple, very easy. Everyone kind of understands what it is. We're not going to go into Kubernetes like right away, right? Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and show you something simple. So I go to jujucharms.com. I kind of see what's available, and it's as simple as saying, I want to deploy WordPress. Juju's asking Amazon for a machine right now. Amazon is going to respond by giving me a machine. Again, I don't have to pick an AMI. I'm not messing with AMIs at all. It's just going to give me the latest stuff. It's going to update it for me. It's going to do all those things. Then it's going to take the code that is WordPress and execute it on that unit. So it's basically installing WordPress, all the things that you normally do by hand. Now, in case of this charm, I really like this charm because this charm is written by Canonical's IS team who runs WordPress in production. Um, so this is one of those charms that has been heavily tested, heavily peer-reviewed, so I know I'm going to get like a really good experience out of the box. One of the nice things is that charms allow, force you to kind of separate your config from your deployment um, uh, topology. So it's really, really easy for people to reuse parts, right? You don't have like your site specific IP addresses and everything all mixed into one thing, right? You have um, 
your site-specific things in one file, which is like a config file that you can pass to this, uh, and then you have like the good stuff. So now we're going to do uh, to deploy uh, MySQL, but in this case, Matt wants to do MariaDB because um, we can interchange them because that's just a thing here. Um, now I could have picked MySQL here and that would have given MySQL, but just to kind of show you that how you could put the Lego bits together, um, we're doing that. And then I'm going to go ahead and deploy the GUI. Should, should we do the GUI? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's better for uh, showing to showing what's going on behind the scenes. There, it's good stuff. Sure, sure. Now, here's the thing: each time I deploy one of these, I'm getting a new machine because remember this this tool is to build highly scalable systems, right? So if we if we look back at Juju -ju status, we got this huge thing which I don't like. So we could say format tabular, and this kind of gives us a better if I. Right, it kind of tells us here. Right, I'm allocating the agents here. I, I started with machine zero, and I have machine one, two, and three. Each of these things is a machine now, uh, which could be what you want, but it cannot be what you want, right? So if I'm on the public count here, this could get a little expensive for me. So what I would have actually done if this wasn't a demo, I could say this, which I won't hit enter here, but you could say I want to deploy the Juju GUI actually to machine number zero. Right, that means I could take the service and push it to a specific machine. That means I have the state server now and the GUI running on one machine, which is actually how we like to do things. Uh, but I didn't do that in this case, but that's fine. Um, so that's all really great and fine and good, right? So we're just going to wait for this to, um, to finish. Right? So, so far I've shown you things that are generally pretty easy. Okay, this is really cool, right? This is neat. Um, as you can see here, install, it's in the middle of installing uh, WordPress. Let me just tack a watch onto here and shrink the, uh, there you go. Um, as you can see here, right, here are our machines down here, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Here are the services right here. So this is service WordPress. It's the first machine of that service, so that's why they all start with zero. When I add multiple ones, they'll be WordPress slash one, slash two, whatever. Um, as you can see, the MariaDB and Juju GUI machines are still allocating. That means we're waiting for Amazon to fire up the VM. It's doing all the stuff. Bam, you just saw this one just came up right now. And then the charm authors can sit there and tell us exactly what the charm is doing, right? So if we saw WordPress was in the middle of installing um, the software. Now we're waiting for um, MariaDB. Uh-oh, we seem to have a problem. Oh, there it goes. Okay, cool. That's nice. I really like when, so this is an optional thing that Charm authors are starting to add, this level of detail in the status, which is really neat. And then uh, JujuGui coming up the rear, still installing the Charm software on it. So this is very live, very, um, uh, very dynamic. So these public addresses that you see, uh, these uh, like IP addresses that you get, this is all dynamic, right? This is a very cloudy thing. Uh, whereas you have to think about, well, you know, a lot of the I don't know where stuff is going to live, uh, right? So normally, like when I used to do system stuff, it's like, well, the database server has to have this host name, or I'm in trouble, right? Now you see with clouds, host names are just made up. IP addresses could could they're just you know almost random, it seems, right, within a certain octet. So, that, I mean, but that's fine. That's totally fine because this is the cloud, is dynamic, that's what kind of we expect. And all the tools that we're all building around kind of expect things to be that way. So, right now, I haven't really shown you anything rocket science, right? This is kind of cool, right? You ask for things, things execute, and it gives, gives you that, right? So, a, a lot of tools do this, right? There's a lot of automated installation tools, of, of anything, right? You can go onto the AWS Marketplace and find 65,000 million WordPress and MySQL AMIs, right? And go and click on them and get all these things, right? So, like I said, this software is built for scale. Uh, so, for this example, think about that for a minute because I'm about to show you the one thing that Juju does that no one else really does. This is the problem that Juju was made to solve. So, if you think about it, we have um, 
we have the bootstrap node, we have the GUI node, uh, forget about those for a bit, but basically we have a machine with WordPress installed and a machine with a database installed, right? Those things have no concept of each other right now, right? They have, we don't have a working blog, we have a database and WordPress, right? So here's where the magic comes. And I'll go ahead and crank this back up. Uh, hopefully the Google logo isn't, isn't blocking my view there. I'll just give it a new more. You could say, what we're doing here is, this is the, in George speak, is WordPress, database, you guys should be best friends, right? And when we hit enter, what happens here is everything that you had seen in WordPress instructions about, um, you know, WordPress needing to know where the database lives, having the permissions to write the tables that it needs into the database. What Juju does, these two charms have created a loosely coupled channel between themselves on what they expect from each other, right? So the database will say, WordPress, I need, you know, or WordPress will say, I need a database and I need to give it these things. And the database will say, okay, I'm allowed to accept these things. Awesome. That's great. Everything that you would see in instructions about how to connect WordPress, the PHP software, to a database is then executed over this little channel. So they are now talking to each other. We've made a relationship between WordPress and MySQL. Now what's really great about that is we have not made a relation between the two machines that have WordPress and MySQL. We've made the relation between the two services. Those services and Juju currently know what those machines' IP addresses are. Otherwise, it wouldn't work, right? But the, the relationship is defined um, uh, at the service level, not the machine level. Sorry, I confused myself for a minute. Uh, so we saw stuff execute there. We saw the messages where they relate. That's a very fast process, right? Make some tables for me so I work, right? And it's fine. So that's fine. Let's go ahead and cancel out of this. Now, um, we do need to do one thing is we explicitly make you expose a service to the outside world. Um, so if you could see this here, we basically say, okay, you, are, you can allow, and then this will turn on the firewall in AWS to allow that port uh, to be open. Each charm author can define what ports are exposed when the user types this, right? So in this case, in WordPress, we know only port 80 will be exposed at this point. And uh, I believe 443 also. Does that have that? I don't know. But either way, the point is that uh, you're not exposing the entire machine or anything like that to the internet. Just the ports that are um, uh, defined by the author. So you can actually ask it, you know, what Give me the status of just this service, right? So the service we've called WordPress. Um, it's using the charm called WordPress. You can also call it whatever you want. We could have, could have called this my cool blog, uh, but the charm is called WordPress. We know that it's exposed now, which is really good. Uh, service status unknown. This is uh, something that this charm isn't using service status yet, so that's just something we need to fix. Uh, we know we know that it's uh, connected that it has relationships to MariaDB and a load balancer WordPress, which we'll come back to later. Um, and here's the unit itself, idle. And here's the port it opens. So this one only opens port 80, uh, which is fine. At this public address, 5480.48.12. So if you want to pay, paste that address into the IRC channel, we should be able to go to this address and see a blog. So let me open up a new browser. And let me stop sharing here. Hey, we have a blog. Pretty awesome. All right. So let's go ahead and set up our blog. Call this Juju Demo, George. Not going to show you my password. I 
And we have a blog, yay. So now we'll go ahead and log in. There's our blog, just to show you that it works. Well, it wouldn't work if the database didn't work. Test post, hello. And there's our blog, okay. Not bad, not bad, that, 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 was, that was okay, what you did there. Um, so, as you can see, I was very quickly was able to, to set up a blog uh, with no problem. So with a simple case like a blog, two units talking to each other, not very impressive. I understand that, right? But when you think about the more complicated pieces of software that are available today with clustering and whatnot, um, and you'll see that in later sessions on today, the ability to do this becomes really powerful. Now, there is one more thing uh, because we're running short on time, and a point I really want wanted to make to you is, let me stop sharing here. Can you guys see my terminal again? Okay. Um, if we do the Juju status again, oh boy, uh, we've we've got these machines. And like I said before, the relationship that I've made between WordPress and the database uh, that was a machine specific. Right, that was service specific. So what does that mean? What that means is you get horizontal scaling for free. Okay, that means well, now when I say this, it means if you look at the way people are architecting new architectures, like the guys at Amazon, um, Netflix, they're doing this what they call the microservices approach. Right, is where you have multiple services running on a lot of instances that do one job and one job well. Right, and they respond over HTTP to something else. Right. What's really nice about that is that when you add a whole bunch of them and load balance them, you can scale um, without by just adding more machines, right? You have a little bit of amount, you add more stuff, and then you get a more scalable service. When I grew up in computing, everything was vertically um, scalable, which means, oh no, my database is too slow. I need to buy a bigger server, right? These days. Uh, people are all about horizontal scalability. Our database service is too slow. Add more machines, right? And as they add, the software itself, if you look at software like Cassandra, is fundamentally different from the old school kind of big database that needs big iron, right? Um, and you just add machines to it, and the software figures out what it needs to do, and then everything is happy, you know, and, and, and whatever. That's a simplified version of what horizontal scalability is. But... It is awesome, and it's changing the way that people deploy software. So when you get horizontal scaling for free, it's really a big deal, which means what we can do is we can take this blog and make it automatically scalable. So what do we need? What do we need? We, we'll always need a load balancer, right, because we need one place that's blog.blah.com, right, that people need to go to. So we're going to need that. So we are going to deploy HA proxy, and just to show you how, the, how this is possible, um, we'll call this George blog. Uh, balancer, just to give our environment something a little bit more descriptive, right? It's called George's Blog Balancer, but it's taking the HA proxy charm, and and it's doing that, right? Now, now we have HA proxy out, right? Amazon is once again get us this an instance. Don't need to do any of that stuff. Solve problem. That's awesome. I get my prompt back right away. That's all I really wanted, right? We need to add a relationship between George's blog balancer and WordPress. So why is this? Well, in order for HA proxy to work, it needs to know where it's load balancing to, right? So in the same way that WordPress needs to talk to MariaDB, HA proxy needs to talk to WordPress. So right, this is the you guys be buddies. They're doing this at the service level, not at the machine level. So now let's look at our topology here. Right, so we have a load balancer, right? And then what you would do in production is have your DNS going to this, right? And if you go to that load balancer, oh, we would also juju unexpose WordPress and juju expose HA proxy. So what we've done now, oh, sorry, 
not AJ proxy, George Blog Balancer, because I named it that. So what we've done here is had the live traffic instead of going to WordPress. Um, actually, I did these in the wrong order. I should have exposed HA proxy first. Um, switch my DNS, then unexpose WordPress, right? Now I have every, all my traffic going to the load balancer, right, which is then going to WordPress. So the blog is still up and running. That's fine, um, right? But now I'm set to horizontally scale because now as people hit that, HA proxy will do the hard work of sending people to the right place, right? And if I get overloaded, my blog starts to slow down, what do I do? I add more units, and HA proxy is kind of smart enough to do all that stuff for you. Right? So here's where the free horizontal scalability is. If I would have set this up by hand and I wanted to add more WordPress, I would have to fire up a unit, make that WordPress talk to the database, then go into HA proxy and say, HA proxy, this new node exists, right? And you would be SSHing and doing a bunch of stuff. Um, but since I've defined this at the service level, I don't have to do those things because the services know already what to do because the charms are smart enough to, to know what to do, right? Um, so as you can see here, we've got the load balancer, the WordPress, and the database. You could say juju add unit and three. Let's add three more units of WordPress and then watch the status. So what do you think is happening here? We're getting three more units of WordPress. Don't have to look at AMI, don't need to do anything. We're doing the exact same thing that we did before, except now, because WordPress and HA proxy are buddies, I don't have to manually go in there and configure each of those WordPresses to talk, you know, tell it where the database is, uh, tell it where the load, I don't have to tell the load balancer where the WordPress is, and that's just happening there. And because of the way the charm is written, the service isn't interrupted, which means you could start firing off stuff right away and your service is up, which is what everybody wants. Now, this is just a simple example of scaling out um, just the application layer, right? We also have the database layer, uh, which I'm, I'm not going to have time to get to today. But scale bit, you can't just add a bunch of WordPress units and expect the universe to work, right? At some point, the database also becomes... Um, a blocker there. So what you can do is you can add, because MariaDB has nice clustering capabilities, and the charm is able to do these, you can also just start to add and model how you want your database cluster to be, right? And you no longer have to go back to all the WordPresses and tell them about this, right? Because the charm is doing that for you, right? The charm, you have said, WordPress and MariaDB have a relationship, right? And Juju is smart enough to say, uh, okay, I need to ensure that these things always execute every time I see something change in either one of these services. So, so uh, open computes, I think that's... Uh, so how do you automate scaling up WordPress or MariaDB when met with peak, peak traffic? So this is very interesting. We've actually thought about doing this. Could you make it so, um, you know, add a relation ship to a monitoring system, let's say Zabbix or, or Nagios, which we have relationships for. You could just relate those and add them, and then you'll get metrics. Wouldn't it be neat if you could then take those metrics, uh-oh, when I'm at 85% capacity, fire up a, um, uh, you know, X amount of instances. And some clouds have that, right? Amazon has an auto-scaling thing. So originally, we had a guy write a prototype who did these kinds of things. The problem is is that scaling automatically is very service specific, right? And making assumptions based on certain things when you start to fire off instances, especially in public clouds that cost people money, um, what Juju would allow you to do is take that and kind of build your own way to do that. Uh, we, we've, we investigated it and we feel that at this time, making a generic auto-scaling solution generically for all the all 300 services that are in the Juju Charm store is a little bit of a bridge too far because you make some assumptions uh, and things like that. So what we're doing is you can use all of this information when you add in a Nagios or something like that, and that will allow you, you can then use, you can then drive Juju to do that for you. Something I should have mentioned, Juju has a full REST API, as does Maz and all the tools that we make. So 
even though I'm typing a command line, what that client really is doing is talking to Juju the API, same with the GUI. Um, there's nothing stopping you from looking and inspecting your service, making decisions based on the logic you care about, and then driving Juju how you see fit. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, and with that, that finishes up. The next, uh, the next session is going to be writing terms with Corey, where we're going to dig a uh, deep dive. And then later on today, we're going to show you how to deploy way more complicated things like big data and Kubernetes and things like that. So I hope I had a really good session. Again, I apologize for the technical difficulties that we've had. And I'm going to go ahead and tear out this environment and reset my AWS creds because I'm awesome. Uh, thank you very much for uh, hanging out, and uh, we'll see you guys at the next session. Thanks a lot.